Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for part 2 of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update. And in the last uh, stream, we just we made an exciting discovery. We found Fenestra, which is this broken Stargate thing. And this is this is relevant to uh, something that's going to happen quite a lot later in the game. So in space exploration, there are two ways to win. You can either do what's called the spaceship victory, where you make a spaceship that can go very, very fast for quite a long time whilst doing uh, some research that requires enormous amounts of power. And in, if you manage to do that, then you win the spaceship victory. Alternatively, you have the archaeological victory, which is something to do with this place, and I haven't actually done it before myself. Last time I did the spaceship victory and then stopped because I, because 0.6 had come out and I wanted to try that. And so the idea is, I, I, I'm aware that you can reassemble this, this ring here and you get a little base thing on it, but beyond that I don't actually know what's going on here. I do know that all of the uh, pyramids we've been to on, on various different planets have uh, some glyphs in them that are a clue towards what you need to do. So we're probably going to need to go out to all of the different planets, have a look at all the different pyramids, and then solve the puzzle. And I'm not sure exactly what that's going to involve, but I'm certainly very interested to find out. So that's going to be that's going to be our big objective for this run. We're going to try and solve solve the Fenestra mystery. The other thing that Fenestra is good for is that you can use it as a shortcut for getting to places, um, because it is the same distance from absolutely everywhere. So if you're trying to get to a star field that is an incredibly long distance away, if you go to Fenestra and then go from Fenestra to the other star field, it's quicker. Um, that's a little bit of a weird byproduct, side effect, I suspect, but it's something we may take advantage of in the future. But for now, not so necessary. And the next thing I want to have a look at is all the different exotic resources we're going through, all the outposts we've got. Let's just have a quick run through and see what's been done, because we've made quite a lot of updates recently. So one of the ones, let's start out here on Kothar, where Mike has been doing a few things. So he had a problem with the Vulcanite supply that was being brought down here, and I gather it was something along the lines of somewhere, and I'm not sure exactly where, but somewhere was requesting one Vulcanite cube at a time. So it would be a case of he'd use one Vulcanite cube in order to make a... Um, a cation bead down here and then he'd request another one from Norvis and so the spaceship would come out with that eventually with that Vulcanite cube and pass it out down here it would go into the train and then nothing would happen because that is a silly number to be requesting. Now he's requesting I don't know how many thousands but lots of them anyway so now it's being brought over from the from Norvis in healthy quantities brought down here in the in the trains and loaded up into this train which then eventually will bring it down to over here it can be unloaded from here, then passed around and made into the cation beads. And he's expanded the cation bead production as well to keep up with to keep up with demand. And it, that, I would say, looking at these belts, that he was very much successful with that. So yeah, the um, the production of, of uh, iridium seems to be going now. It's uh, it's producing uh, uh, as expected and, and and doing reasonably well. I still think that having this intermediate train system in the middle here is is going to cause is, is causing some a slight awkwardness, but never mind. And so, with that improvement, we are now producing iridium at a, a rate. Um, it's being loaded into the train here, and so eventually this train will fill up. It can then take the iridium off to, go, to put it into the spaceship where it can be taken over to, uh, to Norvis, or at least to Norvis orbit, to then be distributed to wherever it's needed. I feel this is a little bit slower than required at the moment. Um, looking at the iridium production, uh, we'll look at uh, ingots and ingots. Over the last hour or so, well... We've been producing it at a reasonably steady, let's call that about 100, 110 per minute. And then over here, recently we've been using it at 542 per minute. I suspect this means a ship arrived here, and this is the rate we actually want to be using it at. Although it is possible that this is also filling up buffers. Either way, I suspect that the 100 per minute that we seem to be producing it at is probably going to be insufficient. And it's going to need to be bumped up a little bit. So uh, we may need further expansion on the Iridium planet. But I'm happy to wait and see. Um, we may find that with a bit of buffer filling, this is actually sufficient. Mike has also been busy with Taras, not Talos, but Taras. This is the place where the um, the Immersite comes from, and so we, again we've got the standard system down here. Um, this is this is very much a work in progress, so I'm not going to criticise this for being unfinished because it's it it's known to be unfinished, so there's no problem there. He's, this is what he's working on at the moment. Hence his spaceship is here, and so he's got he's going to have the train going down, bring it, bringing the Immersite up, putting it into a spaceship. The spaceship flies off with it. You used to you know how all this sort of stuff works. 
Down on Taras, we need. We, there are a few inputs we need, though. So as you can see over here, we have a delivery cannon that's bringing in uh, rare metals. So that'll probably have to start coming in by spaceship. I don't think that's a problem. I think we already have rare metals available in the spaceport, so we can just load them onto the ship. And then all of the processing happens over here. And currently, we're sending. Okay, we're sending the uh, the, the crystals off here to the delivery cannon. Still, we seem to have run out of um, of plates. Um, but basically, oh yes, here we go. Yeah, the the, the construction has been completely hijacked, with the belt now going up this way and over here to the to the space to the station for the for the space trains. Now I notice here that he's bringing he's merging the two belts here, which means we've got crystals and plates on both of the belts. This feels like it could be slightly problematic. Now I know that we, because. Much like um, with with Mark's system on, on over on Big Red, we, we we're going we need to I think we need to produce both of these in the same place. Um, maybe we don't. Maybe we, oh, yeah. So we yes we produce because we produce the imosite powder, and the imosite powder can then be turned into crystals or into plates. You can't. So you either ship the imosite powder out or you ship the plates and the crystals separately. And because it takes eight powder to make one plate, and I suspect the plates probably stack higher. And over here. Okay, these are about one to one, but again, I suspect the crystals probably stack higher. Because of these sort of numbers here, I suspect we probably do want to be shipping both of these separately. However, I think having a mixed train taking them up is probably going to be an issue. We're going to have to find some way of bringing, bringing the stuff across from Taras over to Norbit in appropriate proportions based on how we're using it. So that's going to mean sending signals over where we say, where we actually request it, and then if, if, if one is less than zero, then we pass that one through. If not, we don't. So we're going to need to do a bit of a bit of funny business here in order to get them to, uh, to get them to, in order to get it shipped across nicely. Um, exactly how that's going to be done, we shall wait and see, I suspect, um, because it's probably going to be at least a little bit complicated. Over on Big Rid, Mark has been continuing his attempt to comple completely make this planet safe. So there are glaive beams wandering around. You're not a glaive beam. You're a glaive beam. So there are glaive beams wandering around, killing off the biters. They're trying to burn up the um, the worms. That's only a big one, so that's not too bad. That's a behemoth that'll take forever to kill. That's a big worm, so that'll kill die reasonably. Ooh, no, it's decided to do this one. That's a behemoth that's so going to take a while to kill, even though it's down to half health. Interestingly, it seems to be drifting back and forth between these two. I've not seen a beam do that before. I don't know why it's doing that. Normally they will sit on one particular enemy until it's completely dead, and then they'll go off onto the next one. So I, I'm slightly surprised. But his objective with this is to make the entire planet safe. Now, this is a Vitamelange planet, and that means it gets biter meteors. And that means that sometimes when meteors hit the planet, they will have biters riding on them. However, you can deal with that by shooting down all of the meteors with a with a suitable uh, gun emplacement, which I believe uh, Mark has up in orbit. Yes, here we go. He's got a huge number of guns here, so he should be pretty safe from this. But it's it's a sort of it's, it's a project that's going on, and and he's clear, clearing them out quite nicely down there. As part of doing that. He set up an additional beam in uh, Kalidas orbit, so we now have one, two, three, four, five of them. This one is much bigger than the others. That's um, so in theory it'll travel around a bit quicker, do more damage. I'm, I, I suspect. Well, actually, it seems to be linked up to both of these, which is interesting. Um, I didn't know that was a thing, but it seems to be working. So sure, why not? Uh, and then we've got another one over here that's uh, cooking Talos in, in the same way. And then we've got one here that's power providing power to Snowdrop. So we're up to a good number of these beam weapons, uh, but most of them are concentrating on clearing out Big Red. Once that's finished, I might nick them for Talos because I've had some issues over there. Over on Njord, this is where the, which is where the Holmium comes from, and you'll remember that I've been talking about that as being a bit of a supply problem. So in an attempt to improve that, Tristan's been upgrading the modules. So you can see we've got some tier 3 um, productivity modules in here, a, a variety of 2s and 3s of the speed modules over there. Now it looks like... Yeah, okay, yeah, he's run out of the tier 3 prod mods here and, the, and probably the speed modules as well. So the idea is that he's going to try and drag all of this kicking and screaming into the tier 3 generation. And that will give us a relatively significant boost because there's one two, three, four, four stages of the Holmium production, which can each be given an extra 8% eight, uh, eight, eight boost, I think it is. Um, and so that's going to make things quite a lot, quite a bit better. We're going to get a decent chunk extra Holmium out from that. But you will, we'll also notice that over here, there is not very much Holmium being delivered. Is it still getting swallowed up by all of the um, delivery cannons? Yes, it is. So at the moment, 
Yeah, I feel like we should turn off all of these delivery cannons and stop them firing just so we can get it flowing over to the planet, over over to the spaceship properly um, and shipping out that way. But uh, I, I don't know, it's always a difficult decision because once you get the spaceship running, you've got that extra throughput and suddenly you get loads appearing at once and you can sort it to wherever it's needed. Whereas the delivery cannons, you're using up extra resources in order to send it out like that. It feels a little bit wasteful, um, but it keeps everything running while you're waiting for the for the extra to come through. Now, I think this may be that... we Do we still have insufficient supplies over here? Let's see. So we've got, we've got enough holmium coming in. Uh, there does seem to be a bit of a shortage of holmium powder coming through. Why is that? So it looks to me like we need a lot more holmium ore crush. Oh no, wait a minute, no. We need a lot more stone disposal because these machines are running as fast as they can but the stone isn't being got rid of. So if we could get rid of all of the stone out of, from up here through whatever means necessary, then I think that's going to be a lot better. So the yeah so, so interestingly the problem is we th we all thought that Njord was going to have massive problems with insufficient um, sand coming in in order to keep all of this uh, hydrogen chloride production going but actually it looks like he's got too much stone and that's causing enormous problems along here by causing all of this to jam up so on the plus side I found the problem so hopefully he can go in and fix it without too much difficulty on the negative side um, it's well, actually, no, on the next side, on the, it is going to be a relatively easy one to fix because all he needs to do is pipe this belt over to the spaceship and just dump it all into the into this train over here and it can all just be taken away and dealt with. So it's going to be an easy, easy fix. However, he's going to have to do quite a lot of thinking about priorita prioritization in order to make sure that he only gets rid of stone that he doesn't want and, and make sure that any stone that does get turned into sand in order to make the hydrogen chloride is coming from where he wants it to because I noticed there is a stone mine and a stone train bringing it in here and this needs we need to make sure that this is a very low priority. He says that he's also improved the hydrogen chloride making and so and that is... Uh, um, Yes, over here. So he's added in this section over here, where we're now making the hydrogen chloride with um, advanced chemical plants instead of basic chemical plants. And this means an extra module and also a lot more speed. So this will be running a lot more quickly than it did before. Um, in theory, we should probably be prioritising this coming from these because it's more efficient. However, the only input is stone, which we have too much of. So... I don't think that matters. We're probably okay. Oh, oh, oh he has prioritised it by passing all the sand along the bottom row here. Do we have enough hydrogen chloride? We do have enough hydrogen chloride though. So the system is currently okay. We just need to do something about all this excess stone that's over here. Continuing on the subject of Tristan, he's been uh, working out on, on Snowdrop a little bit, trying to get more uh, heavy oil being brought out here. Presumably that's required for one of these steps. Yes, this one down here. So they're actually making the cryonite bits into cryonite rods requires some heavy oil to be fed in and so he needs he's going to need quite a bit quite a lot of that in order to get this up and running properly um at the moment is it, a, is it actually a problem uh yes he doesn't have a huge amount of it because at the moment the heavy oil is all coming from core processing from the these cores which release a little bit of oil which he's then cooking turning into heavy oil through the most heavy oil productive way he can and also from coal liquefaction down here so that's that that works fine and has been working fine up until now because all of this heavy oil is it being used in order to turn the cryonite that's coming from the core fragment crushing down here into cryonite so he's all so the more the more cryonite he produces the more core chunks he's crushing and therefore the more oil and the more coal to turn into oil he has available so that's great the problem is we've now suggested that actually he needs to start digging it up from a mine over here because we need a lot more cryonite than we were getting through so that means there's going to be cryonite being processed that requires heavy oil it isn't matched by an increase in the number of core chunks coming in and therefore isn't going to be matched by an increase in the heavy oil coming out of this area so that could well be a problem we may need to start bringing in heavy oil so there may, we, there may be some barrels in his future we shall have to see how that goes um, but if, if so then we can always reuse those barrels in order to get rid of some of this um, uh, Vulcan uh, no pyroflux that's being made over here but that's a work in progress we'll have we'll have the oil coming in another way sooner or later I expect he does have a little bit of crude oil being dug up over here but once that's gone it looks like there's not really any more oil on this planet that's that's uh, Imosite uh, says that so yeah no more oil on this planet he's just going to have he's going to have to get that from somewhere else 
Finally, a very quick glance at Talos, where things actually seem to be working quite nicely. We now actually have enough um, enough cryonite here uh, that the system is working. Enough vulcanite. Everything seems to, everything looked great, to be honest. This this seems, it looks like we've we've got enough cryonite now that the system can just tick over, run work nicely, and hopefully we'll be producing beryllium in the sort of quantities that can be taken up up by the train, taken away by spaceship, and the spaceship will come back for more before we run out of cryonite. Now that's not a guarantee. It may things may go th things may struggle a little bit, but I'm hopeful that this will all work as, as it should. I did mess up a little bit and brought far more sulphur than was reasonable over and that jammed up this warehouse so it was completely full of sulphur and then we had problems. So now I've dumped all of an entire warehouse load into here. There's still an excess of it as you can see but in order to reduce that happening, that, that stop that happening in the future I've turned down the request over here and we've got that linked in there. So now we've got um, 25,000 in there and another 12,000 in there and we're requesting 15,000 so we're going to run through a lot of this before we actually run out. Now having got all of this into a stable position where it is all down here and stowed away nicely I feel like maybe I should make that a little bit higher not because I think I'm going to I want to bring that much across each time the ship comes but just to make sure that these buffers stay stay filled now that I've gone through the pain and the effort of bringing all this over here because there is a slight chance of us running out because I haven't really monitored exactly how much is, is required over here. We'll just keep an eye on it. My plan is to take a look at all of my planets at the beginning of each stream, just to make sure they all look happy, solve any problem, problems I see on them, and then go off and, and start doing new stuff as well. So I, th I think that's going to keep things reasonably tidy and reasonably reliable. And looking up in Tal Orbit, just to see how things are going, we can see over here, these are about half full, so that's going going quite well and there's still a little bit of cryonite here waiting to be taken down to the planet so as the next time the train comes up it will drop off all the junk it's got and pick up this extra extra cryonite in order to take it off to uh, down to down to the planet in order to be made into beryllium Speaking of bringing stuff over from other planets, well, we've got over here. We've got all of these, all these loading up facilities. So over here, we've got a, we've got that supply of um, of cryonite waiting here. So we've got thirty two thousand cryonite, four thousand sulfur, eighteen thousand um, vulcanite, and some cables as well, ready to go off to Talos when the ship comes back. I hope you can't hear that helicopter. It's annoyingly loud for me, but I'm hoping the microphone is directional enough. Um, and over here, as I was saying, we're having all the junk brought up and then it's dumped off here. So as you can see at the moment, this is working quite nicely. We've got a steady stream of vulcanite going into this warehouse. It'll, it's filling up gradually. Uh, we've got lots and lots of junk being unloaded from the ship. We've got lots of useful supplies being put back into it. So as you can see down here, we've got the, the vulcanite is being gradually unloaded. Uh, pyroflux will be. We've had some, and we've had some cables put in, in here because those are the only things that Agnea really needs at the moment. Those can pass in there as, 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 as they're needed and requested. But we have rather an excess of, um, of junk over here that we're trying to get rid of. So there's quite a lot of it in this warehouse and this one is completely full of trash. So we need to get rid of all of this. And Tristan has been, has been trying to improve this. Um, as we can see from looking at this system, it doesn't seem to quite be enough. But the idea is that when any of the trains that come up bringing up resources from the ground, like uh, like the one that comes up here to deliver stuff off for the bus, like the one that comes over to deliver stuff for the um, beryllium process, for the, sorry, for the astro science to here, when any of these trains come up, in theory, they should then go to any of these stations over here that need them, any of the junk stations that need them, like like this apparently, which, what are you? Uh, no, you're an emergency train, you're just going to this station because I don't know why. Um, it's, how, how full is this one? Okay, it is pretty full. So it's, coming, it's coming to here, and then heading off, it's taking, it's taking some of that stuff down. So that'll be all of the trains that are supplying the area, but also then when there's not enough of them, in theory, these emergency trains should start up as well. Um, they don't seem to be, unfortunately, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, they're all configured to have different priority levels. So this one is saying if downstream is greater than one, then go. And currently downstream is presumably greater than one because it just, well, it just went. <clears throat> yes. Uh, and this one says two. This one says... One. Okay, I don't know why these ones haven't. I don't know. I suspect the system isn't actually working properly, but because we, and the problem is that I think whichever of the stations along here is first coming in when the train as the train comes in from the right gets priority. So these two are closed. This one is uh, sort of closed. So they're always going to this one for Snowdrop and unloading and taking the stuff away from Snowdrop and not making it across to Agnea. So this is a number of trains that are going through problem by the looks of it. If we had more of these trains running, so for example, if I came along here and I said, I don't care, I want you to go, and I want you to go, and I want you to go, then okay, these are sitting there saying destination full, <clears throat> but once this one gets to here and is loaded up from a different station, there we go, this is one has left Snowdrop now, so another one of these trains has 
Okay, it's going over to downstream over here. We need the, basically, we need the trains to be going a lot more often than they are. We need a lot more trains, trains to be traveling to going, going off, getting the, getting the, getting the stuff from over here, taking it down, and, and, and taking it off for recycling. And this is not working. So for those of you who don't remember, the uh, when the trains come down the elevator, they will all go into here where they will drop off any any junk they've got that will then go down here into the recycling system where it will then go into a train here. <clears throat> it then gets taken away up to here where it gets unloaded here and Tristan has made a massive improvement here. You'll see these, these purple belts that are unloading straight into this warehouse. He said before we had some sort of weird balancing system and then a sort of a... a a, a splitter based sorter along here that was atrocious. So now we have all of these resources just absolutely pouring out of here. We can then feed the sand through into this warehouse and it can, it can travel along there. All of the other resources that we need to get rid of can pass, be passed up here. And as you can see, it's now unloading these trains much more quickly than it was before. It's unloading them at a solid purple belt rate, which is much, much better than what we had before. Interestingly, we seem to have a bit of a backlog in here of the uh, raw rare metals. And a little bit of a backlog of sand, but we are, we are all on the on the other hand, we are dealing with it faster than it's coming in, um, and we haven't had another train come in to join the queue here yet. So I think the system here seems to be working pretty well. Um, it's unlo it's now unloading much much more quickly and effectively than it was before. That's really good. I like that. And this and using a using a um, a warehouse as a sorter like this is perhaps not the most efficient way to do it UPS wise. But it is astonishingly effective and it means you can dump stuff out of it. You can sort things very, very quickly and very efficiently. The next thing I'm going to talk about is research because we've done quite a lot of that this time, which is how we managed to learn about Fenestra. So this might take us a little while. First on the list is this tank that I was talking about last week because it was the research project currently in progress. And I, we haven't used one yet, as far as I'm aware. At least nobody's told me that they've used a tank, uh, or even built one. Um, but I'm still hoping and assuming that it's going to be significantly better than the tank in uh, Vanilla Factorio. Um, I don't know whether it'll actually be useful, but we have researched it because it was there. We have researched the Material Fabricator, which is a, a precursor to making matter catalogues, which we've also researched, and um, also doing... I, I don't really know what this is for. Um, so it says over here, it synthesizes new materials, so it's a particle collider and 3D printer. So I think, among other things, it can turn one resource into another resource, but in an enormously lossy way. Um, and I think it's probably going to also create something that we need to make for these matter catalogues. Uh, but I don't know what. I am looking forward to finding out, though. So the matter catalogue is the next thing that we've done, and that takes a bit of all of the sciences, especially um, especially energy science, to, to tier three of that. So this is going to be another thing for us to work on. So probably we'll probably carry on with doing the four doing the four normal tiers, so astro, uh, material, energy, and bio. And then when somebody is finished with that one, with all of theirs on that one and finished with all of the other things they're working on, then they can go on to do this one. So at the moment, Mike has finished material sciences, but he's busy trying to get the Iridium to be um, manageable and also to get the Immersite to be shipping, being shipped around by spaceship as well. So he's not quite free yet, but hopefully um, at some point, well, at some point relatively soon, I'm sure one of us will be looking for something to do. And then I think matter catalogues could be a very interesting thing to do here. Um, this appears to be, uh, Tristan has described it as a sort of a combination of material and energy science. So if we look in here, you can see it's using um, some of the energy science packs there and the material testing pack. So yeah, I, I can see what he means. So in fact, this, yeah, so we're going to need to start transporting around quite a lot of the um, the data cards in order to make the, these ones. Um, and that's going to mean pulling them off the, uh, the places where they're being made for the, those particular science packs, probably putting them into trains and shipping them off to wherever they're needed. So that's going to be quite interesting I think. I I think it's, there's not going to be an enormous amount of extra stuff that needs to be made for these. This is going to, the, all the challenge here is going to be in the logistics for getting all the bits and pieces that are required into the right places. We have researched the superior exoskeleton which is like the exoskeleton but superior area. Um, so what, what is it? This gives you the um, exoskeleton mark 3 apparently which gives you a speed boost of 60%. That's not too bad. Um, the tier one gives you a speed boost of 20%, so it's three times as good. The idea, the the reason it's better, I suppose, is that you can fit more of them into your, you can fit more boost into your inventory um, because they're the same size, but they give you more speed each. Um, that said, we all have jetpacks, so we're probably not going to bother with exoskeletons. At least I don't think I am. I certainly didn't in my 0.5 run. We've researched biological science pack three, and this means that we can now turn the catalogs that Mark has been making into the uh, into the into the science. 
packs. You, you saw us doing that last time, I think. Um, or at least you would have done if we hadn't run out of um, bio scrubbers. Uh, so we started make we can start making those, and this allows us to do lots of the sort of the personal upgrades along here, um, as well as various productivity modules and lots of other exciting things as well. We have done lots of zone discoveries. So we've done up to zone, zone discoveries 1 to 28. So these are all really, really cheap. As you can see there, it takes sort of zone discovery 29 takes 39, um, 39 science packs. And it's tier 1 astro science packs as well. So it's almost a joke. Uh, so we've just been churning those out, discovering lots of new planets, moons, asteroid belts, all of that sort of stuff. Churning those out because they're really, really quick. So that's how we've managed to do 28 of them in the last, in the last uh, stream. We've also done deep space zone discovery, so this is for discovering um, new star, new stars, new planet, uh, planets around those new stars, and so on. Tristan's notes claim that we've done um, one to thirteen of these. I think he's wrong there because this says twelve on it still, uh, maybe, and it's, it's not queued, so I don't know what happened there. But yeah, we've um, we've been working to we're working towards doing some of those, and that means. We found quite a lot of new stars and new asteroid fields out here in the in the depths of space that we can go off to and potentially plunder, look at, all that sort of stuff. So there's more options out here for places for us to go out to and and, uh, and discover new ex and exciting things. We have done the full set of um, personal bio upgrades uh, for tier three. So we've got the agility three that makes you move faster, constitution three which gives you more health, um, dexterity three which increases your Mac um, pocket crafting speed. Which I mean, I don't do a lot of pocket crafting, but I do occasionally. So yeah, it could be useful. Um, by intelligence three which bo boosts your um, uh, re research productivity. Is productivity, isn't it? Uh, yes, research productivity productivity by five percent. So it's on top of the on top of what all the modules do. And Strength Upgrade, which increases your inventory size, so these are all fantastically useful ones to get. We have discovered Vitalic Epoxy, which is not so useful all by itself, but is an important precursor to doing lots of other things, like, as I say, advanced uh, productivity modules, uh, drilling, apparently, biters, biological catalogues, and so on. So not particularly useful on its own, but it does unlock lots of other tech for us. Including Biological Catalog 4 here, uh, which is the first step of making Biological Science Pack Science Pack 4 as well. Now, as usual, we could research the Biological Science Pack 4, but we haven't done that because if we did, it would then put all of these into our research um, available available re researches to do, and we get a bit confused trying to work out which ones we can do and which ones we can't do based on which science packs we've got. So if we just leave this one unresearched until we're ready to actually start making them, it means that we keep it keeps this whole thing a lot tidier. It keeps the whole queue over here a lot tidier. Makes it easier to tell what's left for us to do. We've researched Productivity Module 7, and this is, uh, they're, they're rather expensive to make. A lot of epoxy, a lot of Module 6s, some Tier 3 catalogues, lots and lots of expensive stuff. But you do get a 16% productivity boost from every single one of those you make. So, you know, I, we're not ready to start using them yet, but it's nice to know they're there. And we've also done two more of the unit capsules. So we've got the Big Biter and the Big Spitter unit capsules. So these are things you can throw out, uh, you can drop them on the floor, and a friendly biter will come out from it, which will fight on your side. Um, it looks like they're fairly expensive to make, so I suspect we're probably not going to use this. We'll probably play around with other weapons instead. But it looks interesting. And we then have a couple more researches going that are in, in progress, and we'll have a look at those next time. Um... The good news is we've all been off doing safe stuff this time, so there's nothing to report on the deaths front. We're all still uh, exactly as we were last week, with Mike way off in the lead and me just ahead of Mark. And that brings us to the end of the episode, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, there will be a special extra stream tomorrow on the on the channel, which is going to be a, a, a stream a stream of supporters as opposed to four supporters. So everybody is welcome to watch it. Please come along and watch it. It'll be starting at uh, half past three uh, UK time, so middle, middle of the afternoon, and we'll be playing... Until, until it gets a bit late, or until we've we've had enough, or something like that. Uh, this will be we will be playing Warptorio, which is a mod where you you fight against the biters until things start to become a bit untenable, and then you teleport a chunk of your base off to somewhere else where there aren't any biters yet, and then you carry on working until the biters start to become too difficult to deal with again. Um, and I think this is going to be quite interesting. It's a supporter stream because I'm inviting any channel supporters to come along and play with me. So if you are a, a YouTube um, member, a Twitch subscriber, or a Ko-Fi donator, or if you've been, or if you uh, or if you won the rocket race actually, <laughs> then basically if you've got supporter status for whatever reason, then uh, make sure you're on the Discord and you've you've claimed it and you can come along and join in and we'll be uh, we'll be playing that for as, as long as um, as long as it takes basically 
Then on Monday there will be another standard Factorio Space Exploration Crash Dorio 2 stream where we should be carrying on with uh, well with this game that I've been talking about for the last uh, half hour or so. Um, that's the the normal normal Monday stream. Then on when, uh, Tuesday there will hopefully be an XCOM video. We shall have to see how uh, whether I've had time to produce one. Wednesday there will be an XCOM stream as always. Thursday and Friday there will be the usual catch up videos. But the week after. Things are shifting around a bit. I'm having to change the schedule. So um, it, that week, there will be a Factorio stream on Monday and Thursday uh, as a sort of a, a way of apology. And there will be the XCOM stream on probably Tuesday or Wednesday. I haven't decided which yet. Uh, plus the normal videos. But then after that... The uh, Factorio streams will move to Thursdays, and the XCOM streams will move to Tuesdays. So I shall see you for all of that stuff in the future, I hope. Uh, once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.